The film begins in California. Riders come charging down from the hills towards a tranquil mining camp where people are searching for gold and going about their daily activities. Suddenly, the peaceful atmosphere is broken by barking dogs as the riders storm the camp, firing their guns and creating chaos. They demolish homes and attack the miners, who are barely able to defend themselves. Amidst the turmoil, a girl named Megan loses her dog Lindsay to the attacker's gunfire. After the horsemen depart, the survivors assess the devastation left behind. Megan, mourning her dog, is comforted by her mother. A cloud of anger and sadness hangs over the camp as they begin to recover from the assault. Megan, still devastated, buries her dog and recites the 23rd Psalm, blending her emotions into the prayer. She conveys her longing, sorrow, fear, and a plea for a miracle, questioning God's presence in their suffering. While she prays, gentle music plays, accompanied by scenes of nature. At the end, a menacing figure on a horse appears, hinting at future developments. In the meantime, Mr. Barrett leaves the camp for town, ignoring warnings about the danger due to his previous experiences, demonstrating either his determination or desperation. Hull Barrett arrives in La Hood, attracting the town's attention. He goes to the Blankenship Mining Supply Store to get provisions, despite the recent trouble at his camp. Mr. Blankenship chastises Hull for coming so soon after the incident and insists on payment in gold for any supplies, reminding Hull that his last payment was eight months ago. Hull states they must leave due to the difficult conditions at their camp and is confident they'll find gold again. Mr. Blankenship grudgingly agrees to provide supplies, noting he's doing so not out of loyalty, but because he's one of the few not under La Hood's control. Hull promises to repay with interest once they discover gold. After Hull leaves the store, some men confront him for not greeting them earlier and for defying their warnings by coming to town. They taunt him and threaten violence, referring to past incidents. They start stealing his supplies and physically assaulting him when a mysterious man on a white horse steps in. The newcomer extinguishes a match meant to burn Hull's belongings and defeats the attackers effortlessly. Hull thanks the stranger, who silently leaves. The hurt men watches Hull and the stranger head towards Carbon Canyon, observed by the worried Blankenships. Hull meets up with the stranger who helped him and invites him to stay at his camp, saying it would be a pleasure. The stranger agrees to join him. On their way, they encounter Ulrich, another miner who is leaving because of the ongoing conflicts and the camp's inability to resist. He advises Hull to leave too if he's wise. Despite Ulrich's departure and advice, Hull and the stranger continue to the camp. At their cabin, while Megan's mother prepares food, Megan reads aloud from the Book of Revelation, describing ominous figures and events, including a rider on a black horse bringing famine and another on a pale horse representing death, symbolizing the apocalypse. While she reads, Megan and her mother see Hull arriving with a mysterious newcomer. The scene cuts to the stranger cleaning himself, displaying scars on his back that imply a violent history. Hull lets him know that dinner will be ready soon, trying to maintain a sense of normalcy despite the dark atmosphere Megan's reading creates. Hull recounts the stranger's battle with McGill and his men, prompting Sarah, Megan's mother, to condemn the stranger as just as brutal as La Hood's men. Hull counters that the stranger's bravery is precisely what they need to defend against La Hood's goons, noting that Lindquist's departure highlights their desperate situation. Sarah feels their community is already beaten and reproaches Hull for encouraging Megan's rebellious attitude. She urges Hull to get rid of the stranger to prevent more violence, threatening to leave with Megan if he refuses. Amid their heated debate, the stranger enters, wearing a preacher's collar, which changes the mood of the conversation entirely. The family becomes courteous, with Sarah expressing gratitude for his aid to Hull and Megan smiling, intrigued by the preacher. At a large mining camp, workers use high-pressure hoses to erode hillsides and funnel the dirt into sluices to extract gold. Injured thugs arrive late, explaining to their boss, Josh, that they were delayed by a visit to the doctor after an altercation with Hull Barrett. They clarified that it wasn't Barrett, but an unknown man who defeated them. Surprised, Josh dispatches them back to work and calls for club, a giant standing over seven feet tall, indicating he's considering a more forceful response. Hull describes the ongoing struggle with Coyla Hood, a wealthy miner who has exploited the area since the mid-1850s through hydraulic mining, except for Carbon Canyon, which he also desires to control. Despite formal claims, LaHood's clout makes legal action seem futile. Megan, still resentful over personal losses caused by LaHood's men, refuses to leave regardless of what others decide. Hull acknowledges the futility of law enforcement efforts against LaHood due to his power and their lack of concrete evidence of his wrongdoings. Hull, 
caring for Sarah and Megan after their losses and grappling with his own unfulfilled romantic feelings for Sarah, discreetly seeks the preacher's help to officiate their possible future wedding. The preacher, recognizing the complexities of human relationships and Hull's predicament, offers his assistance with work, showing his readiness to support the community in multiple ways. Hull has been trying to split a boulder in the stream, hoping it might contain gold, but avoids using explosives to protect the stream. The preacher assists him by striking the boulder with a sledgehammer, catching the attention of Megan, Sarah, and others. As they work, Josh and Club from La Hood's camp arrive. Hull introduces the preacher to Josh, who confronts the preacher about a previous altercation with La Hood's men. The preacher asserts his presence is necessary because of the sinners in the area. Club, attempting to scare them, effortlessly splits the boulder with one powerful blow. However, when Club tries to attack the preacher, he is quickly overpowered and helped back onto his horse by the preacher. After they leave, the preacher and the others continue working together to break down the boulder. A train from Sacramento brings Coy LaHood, who reunites with his son Josh and McGill. They brief Coy on their operations. Coy asks about Carbon Canyon. When he hears about a preacher rallying the miners, Coy becomes irritated, knowing the preacher could spark hope and defiance among the miners. He initially considers summoning the preacher, but then avoids it to prevent making him a martyr. Coy also highlights issues from Sacramento, including political opposition to hydraulic mining, emphasizing the urgent need to seize control of Carbon Canyon and personally handle the preacher. Megan wonders if her grandparents approved of her mother's marriage and finds out they were upset not due to her mother's age, but because of her choice of spouse. Megan questions if her mother would have been happy marrying Hull, and Sarah gives an unclear answer, noting Hull's kindness. Megan also asks if preachers can marry, and Sarah says yes, complimenting Megan's beauty. While working in the stream, Hull finds a large gold nugget, exciting everyone except Spider, who is displeased. Hull's discovery, beneath a boulder, confirms his hard work and calls for a celebration. Despite Sarah's concerns, the group decides to visit town, hoping this will also help settle Hull's debts. In town, as Hull talks to Mr. Blankenship, Josh tells Sarah, Megan, and the preacher that his father wants to see the preacher. Despite Sarah's doubts, the preacher goes with Josh. Inside, Coy LaHood meets the preacher. He welcomes the preacher and notes his surprise at the preacher's strong appearance, contrary to his expectations of a weak clergyman. LaHood tries to entice the preacher away from Carbon Canyon by offering him chances to preach and a brand new church in town. His goal is to convince the preacher to abandon the miners and their struggle. The preacher, seeing LaHood's motives, declines, stressing that one cannot serve both God and money. LaHood retaliates by threatening to enforce a writ granting him mining rights in Carbon Canyon and gives the preacher 24 hours to persuade the miners to leave, hinting at possible violence by bringing in Marshall Stockburn if they resist. The preacher negotiates with LaHood, starting with an offer of $100 per claim, and successfully increases it to $1,000 per claim to avoid confrontations. However, LaHood insists that the miners must leave within 24 hours. Hull, having settled his debts, returns to the wagon just as the preacher leaves LaHood's office, suggesting a conversation between the preacher and LaHood over drinks. Later, around a campfire in Carbon Canyon, the miners discuss LaHood's $1,000 per claim offer. Spider is dubious, thinking the land is worth much more. The preacher advises them to think carefully, warning about potential violence from Marshall Stockburn and his dangerous deputies if they reject LaHood's offer. Despite the threats, Hull appeals to the miners' sense of home and pride, reminding them how connected they are to the land and their shared hardships. He questions the worth of their dignity if they give in now. Inspired by Hull's speech, the miners unanimously decide not to take LaHood's money, choosing to stay and defend their land and values. After the meeting, Megan shows the preacher her dog's grave, revealing she prayed for a miracle, which she believes came through him. When Megan confesses her love and asks about the prospect of marriage and intimacy, the preacher gently explains that while love and intimacy are normal, she will find the right person for her in time. He suggests her mother might be concerned, causing Megan to wrongly assume the preacher has feelings for her mother, Sarah. Disturbed by the confusion, Megan storms off in anger. The preacher heads to LaHood's mining camp, reviews the operations, and informs Josh that the miners have declined LaHood's proposal before departing. Later, at the train station, the telegraph officer spots the preacher. He vanishes after McGill sends a telegram to summon the marshal. The telegram reaches Yuba City, prompting the marshal's office to take swift action. Back at the miners' encampment, Hull realizes the preacher has left, taking his belongings. Hull thinks they can cope without the preacher, 
but Sarah criticizes the decision to reject LaHood's offer, fearing they overly depended on the preacher's aid. Their discussion is cut short by an explosion. Upon investigation, they discover LaHood has blocked the creek, drastically reducing their water supply. Sarah argues that accepting LaHood's offer would have avoided this, highlighting the growing tension and uncertainty in the camp after the preacher's departure and LaHood's hostile action. The preacher retrieves his guns from a safety deposit box at Wells Fargo and Coe's Express, leaving behind his preacher's collar, revealing a violent past. In Carbon Canyon, the miners, feeling hopeless without the preacher, consider leaving after LaHood blocked their water source. Despite Hull's attempt to motivate them with a fabricated message from the preacher, morale remains low, and they choose to give mining another shot for two more days. Spider, suspecting Hull's deceit, advises him to leave with Sarah and Megan for their safety. Meanwhile, the marshal and his deputies are on their way, indicating approaching trouble. Megan, feeling disconnected and perhaps looking for comfort or something to do, asks Hull if she can take the mare out, and he agrees without any bitterness towards her. Spider finds a big gold nugget and joyfully announces his newfound wealth, causing excitement among the miners. At the same time, Hull, who stays seated and distant from the celebration, apologizes to Sarah for their hardships and suggests they now have a chance to leave together, as Spider's discovery signals a change in luck for the miners. Hull tells Sarah that he has always cared for her and Megan, hoping to build a future with them. Sarah appreciates Hull's kindness and agrees to be with him, attributing her recent stress to confusion. They think about starting anew somewhere else, hoping for a fresh start, and possibly finding another preacher to officiate their wedding. Megan goes to the Layhood mining camp looking for preacher and is confronted by Josh, who forcibly detains her. The situation escalates until preacher intervenes from afar, neutralizing the threat posed by Josh and his men. He then rescues Megan, and they leave the camp safely together. In town, a drunken spider Conway confronts LaHood, demanding a duel. Inside, LaHood instructs Stockburn, a marshal with six deputies, to get rid of the preacher and the miners, mentioning the preacher's distinctive, intimidating eyes. Outside, Stockburn and his deputies confront Spider, forcing him to dance by shooting at his feet before fatally shooting him when he draws his gun. LaHood watches the execution from a distance. Stockburn tells Spider's sons to deliver a message to Preacher, challenging him to a showdown. In the meantime, the Preacher comes back to Carbon Canyon with Megan. The miners, including Ev Gossage who had been updating the Preacher about things, are taken aback, especially learning about Megan's prior disappearance. The Preacher reassures both Sarah and Megan, having just rescued Megan from La Hood's dangerous camp. From the townsfolk, he finds out that Spider Conway was murdered by Marshal Stockburn and his deputies, who have now challenged the Preacher to a showdown. In a private conversation, Sarah and the Preacher talk about Megan's rescue and the impending duel with Stockburn. Sarah begs the Preacher not to fight Stockburn, reflecting on her past losses and choosing to move forward with Hull, who offers stability. They share an intimate moment before the Preacher decides to confront his past, keeping his true identity vague. The Preacher and Hull sabotage LaHood's mining operation, after which the Preacher goes into town alone, leaving Hull to protect Sarah and Megan. At home, Sarah and Megan ponder their feelings for the Preacher, with Megan regretting not saying goodbye. In town, the Preacher confronts LaHood and Stockburn's men in a cafe. The men recklessly shoot up the place, mistakenly believing they have killed the Preacher, who then reappears uninjured and takes them on. The Preacher skillfully outguns the remaining attackers in a climactic face-off, methodically taking down Stockburn's deputies in a tense standoff. Using strategy and stealth, the Preacher eliminates each deputy before finally confronting and killing Stockburn in a decisive duel. Meanwhile, Hull deals with La Hood, removing any further threats. As peace returns, the Preacher leaves town. Megan tries to follow him, but is warned not to overwork the horses. Instead, she calls out her gratitude and love to the Preacher, her voice echoing into the distance. The Preacher heads into the snowy mountains, having influenced the lives he encountered but continuing his lone journey. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.